Guys, this is unbelievable. This may be one of the craziest things I've ever seen. There are thousands and thousands of rare betas in all of these jars. Welcome to Aquario Calypso Fish Farm. The place is guarded for really heavy. doesn't know this exists. Those are really expensive and hard to find. 100,000 gallons. I don't know any other person here in Colombia that can breed this. Dude, what <laughs> is going on? <laughs> What's up guys, we're here today in the mountains of Medellin, Colombia, and you guys are about to get an inside look into a fish farm that not many people have been able to enter or see. The name of it is Calypso Fish Farm, one of the largest fish farms in Colombia, probably in all of South America. They breed hundreds of different species of fish. We got in touch with the owner, Manuel, and we're gonna be getting a private tour today. The place is locked up. As you can see, the place is guarded pretty heavily, so. Easy, Scooby, easy, easy. We're here to film. Good boy, good boy. That's a mean looking Scooby. Hi guys, Manuel. How are you? All right. Welcome to Aquario Calypso Fish Farm. Where are we? Okay, we are in Cocorna, Antioquia. It's a town near to Medellin, the capital of Antioquia, one of the biggest cities from Colombia. You are today in the biggest fish farm breeder from Colombia and maybe from Latin America. We're also here with Johnny from Aqua Market. They're all friends, guys. Everyone's friends here. Where do we begin? This place looks like it's massive. Okay, right. let's go. Right away, you'll see there's pretty much tons of outdoor ponds here full of fish. Yes. Tell us about the weather here in Medellin. Okay. It's very famous for being pretty much year-round mm -hmm. awesome weather. The coldest day here in Cocorna is like 22, 23 degrees, uh -huh. and the hottest, 33 Celsius. Perfect weather. So it's like summer here year-round. Summer, and we have also, because of the mountains, we have lots of water. It's natural. Yes, it's natural. We'll just let you show us around. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Here we have, dude, <laughs> what is going on? <laughs> this looks like it's a Coca-Cola factory. <laughs> <laughs> We have here like the last growing part of the betas. So we need to put them separately and we use this little bottle. They need to be alone because you know, they kill each other. They grow here like one month until they go into the shops and they go to a customer. Is it okay for a beta this big to be in a bottle like this? Yes, they have water change daily. It's controversial, but it's just a stage of one month until they go into the final customer, okay? Where do you get the bottles from? Are these glass? <laughs> it's aguardiente. You know it's the alcohol here. It's the alcohol here. It's alcohol. Wow, you drank all this yourself? <laughs> Dude, this is so many bottles of betas. How many betas is this? We can have like 4,000, 10,000 betas. We can breed between 600 and 800 betas weekly. No, we, we all only sail here in Colombia. All these betas are just for just Colombia. Colombia. Is this because you can't import these legally? Yes, we have 120 species because we can't import legally. In other countries that we've shot videos in, a uh, fish farmer will specialize in just betas or just arowana. Because it's illegal here to import fish, they have to produce and provide every species. And so they go for a huge wide range of fish instead of specializing in just one. We also have here the breeding section of angel fish. Yeah. Freshwater angel fish. These are your breeding pairs right here. Yes. Look this beautiful red-eyed freshwater angel fish. I love this one, the platinum. The platinum angel fish. Yeah. Which angel fish are the most expensive or the most rare? I think the blue pinoy. We have here a pair. And so what do those sell for? Um, maybe 40,000 pesos. 10 to 15 dollars. Uh -huh. I have 15 dollars. These are the koi angel fish. The koi angel fish, albinum red eye and platinum red eye. How old are the breeding pairs? Mostly? Between a year and a half and three years. Wow, these are the little ones. So yes. how old are these ones? Those are probably two weeks, maybe. Here we have uh, one week, oh, one platinum week. escalar. This is Chinese neon. Here we have little fishes coming out of the eggs. Look how tiny they are. Look at these guys. Is this, these are breeding pairs? Yes, postcards. These are the guppy endlers. Oh, these are the uh, endler guppies. Yes, and we put this yeah. in plastic fiber in order to simulate plants so they can put the eggs and hatch them. What is the one with the like orange and yellow tail? 
We call them here uh, Jama Guppy, Flame Guppy. The flame guppy. We also have some eggs here. Wow, there are babies everywhere. A lot of different tanks here with all different stages of the cycle. You will like these a lot. They're corridors. Albino. Albino, Albino corridors. corridors. How many buildings are there like this? Like this, we have four. That's building number one. Here we have this second biggest structure right here. We produce them in the tank or we produce them inside this kind of a structure. Wow, so these are all the African cichlids. Ooh, they're getting spooked. You got a little frog in there. Is he supposed yeah. to be in there, huh? <laughs> with so many outdoor uncovered ponds, do you ever have problems with birds coming and swooping your fish? Birds, otters. Otter for, yes. Otters, you have otters. Foxes, like... there are lots of predators. That's what the dog is for. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yes, we need to fight those predators for sure. Okay, let's check out the ones up there. This section is the other section of African cichlids too. Wow, these are beautiful. How many different species of cichlids do you have? Maybe between 30 to 40. The color ones are the male, and the ones that doesn't have color are the female. The different species of cichlids, can they live together? Yes. So all of these theoretically could get along in a tank? Yes. How many people do you have working here? 20. 20, ah, yes. Big employer. Those are the breeders, and they work for Aquariocalypso. How do you find these guys? They are all native from, the, from this area, from Cocorna, and we teach them how to do this. That's unbelievable. You got young guys here breeding thousands of fish who are pretty much experts at what they do, don't have a title in college. Or... We have all the preparation and they learn how to do this in this place. You got leaf cutter ants here. We don't have ants like this where we live. Our ants are just black and boring. Do you deal with certain sicknesses, parasites, stuff like that? Yes, we need to fight a lot with parasites and bacteria. It's just because of the fresh water and it's natural. I think the most uh, difficult and expensive fishes that we have in an aquario calypso are here. This is the room where they keep all of their best fish. Let's go. Oh, it is steamy in here. Oh. Here we have uh, African cichlids, we have Petra from Congo, we have Lele Uppies, we have discus, a lot of discus, beautiful discus. What are these? Makoluchis, they are rainbow fish, but those are really expensive and hard to find. There are African cichlids, it's one male for ten females in order to have a good reproduction of these fish, okay? Whoa, look at this guy. These are ca caudopuntatus, really beautiful. Yeah, the yellow And fish. they are really hard also. Oh my gosh, look at the discus. Those are checkerboard. Whoa. Dude, I want to take one of these home. This is, these are amazing. So this is Colombian born and bred. Colombian born and bred. These right. little ones here are transgenic barbus sumatrano. Oh, these are like little baby uh, glowfish. This is a tetra Congo. My dad told me that this could be the only one tetra from Africa. Maybe Heiko can confirm that that for we need, us. We need Heiko to endorse yes. that uh, claim before we make it official. I think Heiko doesn't know this exists. If you're watching this, don't tell Heiko. You should be watching. Heiko's liked and subscribed. Okay, so he's Heiko, hello. <laughs> I'm a big fan of yours. <laughs> These are Rasboras. Lots of little discos. These are oh. cherry barbs. These are the ones I like, right? Yeah. Those are beautiful. I love these. They're yes. some of my favorite ones that I've seen in Colombian fish stores. Also, the red one is the male and the not colored one is the female. Look at these beautiful little baby discus. Aww. Look at it. Look at it. So, so tiny. Little guys. Yeah, perfect. Wow. So many different fish here. We are blazing hot. It's like a sauna in here, maybe 100 degrees plus. So, hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We are. Sacrifice. We're sacrificing. It's hard. This is hard, but we're gonna get. We're gonna do it. We want to show you guys the fish. Hit that subscribe button. Look how big and blue this one is. Look at the little babies on the. <gasps> so much life is happening here. These are the firefish. Yes. So the males are like the more orangey pink ones. Yes. The fiery color. I don't know if you have seen that we have really beautiful pairs of discus, but we also have ugly ones. If you see a, an ugly pair, it's because it's a good father. Mm. But what we do is, from a beautiful pair that are not good fathers, we take those eggs and we put them on an ugly good pair yeah. of fathers. 
and they will raise them as their kids. Not all the discus parrots here are good parents. Yes. Is that they what sometimes eat them? Eat them or, or eat their eggs. Right. Adopted discus. Adopted yes. discus. I wonder how many discus fish grow up not knowing they're adopted. How valuable are some of these discus pears? You know, here in Colombia the discus are really expensive because we can't import them, so $150 per so, discus fish. What are some of the rarest discus you have in your collection? I think the checkboard, the blue diamonds. Over there we have San Mera. Jack Wally is one of the most famous discus breeders, renowned as bringing the discus hobby to even the United States. Very well known all around the world. He brought discus to this farm. How is Jack Wally, the legendary discus breeder, sort of connected with this farm and your father? Jack Wally, uh, in the 80s, he wanted these little colored frogs. Yes. Poison dart frogs. Yes, that was his hobby. So. Quatli tried to find a person who can send those frogs from Colombia to him. My father told him, yes, Jack, I can help you. And he changed those frogs with him for discus. That's the story. And they were really good friends. When Jack came here, he stayed in our house. I yes. didn't realize that was the start. It all started with some poison dart frogs yes. being exchanged for some discus. <laughs> You can see here Blue Dempsey. There's a Blue Dempsey and a Jack Dempsey. They're just staring at us. What's up, guys? Hi. Welcome to the channel. So in this room, more cichlids. More cichlids. Look how blue those are, actually. That's an Aulonocara red flush. Just keeps going and going. These are all the Aulonocaras, little Aulonocaras. Oh, okay, yeah. we, we can go outside of the sauna. We have a little section here of aquarium plants. So the plants, they also produce a little bit of them, but really it's mainly for their own retail shop. They don't wholesale the plants, but still, you can see there are some beautiful, beautiful plants here. So does anyone live here? On, yes. At, at the farm? This is the guy that lives here. He is the one who keeps watch everything. No problems? Oh, yeah. yeah, todo bien. That's what we like to oh, hear. <laughs> we use these structures to rise up the heat. This amount of heat is because since the water is hotter, their metabolism will be accelerated. They grow faster. What is this? <laughs> uh, since we are in a rural part, the electricity is not so stable. So when it rains a lot, light goes off. And if the light goes off, pumps, also, pumps go off. also go off. So this is an electric generator. Wow. Okay, an old one, like 20 years ago. Yeah, it looks but like it, it works could be great. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yes. What do you call these water plants? We call them buchonas here. These plants are really good for breeding goldfish because since they have these big roots, you see. Yeah. The goldfish puts their eggs into the root. They usually are purple, and this is my first time seeing a white one. You've uh -huh. never seen a white one? Oh yes, wow, one. here's the goldfish. Right here we have uh, some firefish aulonocaras. This one is one of the most desired in uh, aulonocara here in the market, okay? The firefish. Oh, you can see the koi over there. Oh, these are the koi. Oh, wow. <laughs> you got some beautiful koi. How many koi do you think you produce? Thousands? Yes, you'll see the, the tank. Oh, it's out there. We have lots. In this section, we have the Ateriniformes, the family name of the rainbow fish. Wow. Those are really, the, I think, the hardest uh, fish to harvest in this fish farm. I don't know any other person here in Colombia that can breed this species. They grow very slowly. So, for example, a little rainbow fish from this could be a year and a half until they go outside. They are even little when they go into the fish store. It's very hard to keep up probably with the demand on the rainbow fish. It's really hard. These tanks, or these ponds right here are basically earth tanks built out of the uh, ground here. Yep. Pretty cool. So they're trying to mimic the natural environment. We have our most beautiful goldfish. Goldfish. You guys have all the different types of goldfish. We have lots. They're very pretty. These ones are huge. God, those are some massive Oscars. Is that as big as they get or do they get bigger? A bit bigger, but they are really big right now. Oh, and there's more koi. Look at the way they're swimming, Asher. Oh, wow. They're making like, a whirlpool. They're making uh -huh. a whirlpool. So goldfish are very susceptible to lots of different diseases. So they like to keep them in this greenhouse, which is supposedly the hottest place on the farm. I didn't think it could get hotter than the discus room. But... You can go inside. Nice and toasty. There's no way. Hey, you're going to boil if you fall in there. We got the koi here. 
Uh, I love the shapes they make when they swim together. Oh, uh, they're creating a cyclone. Okay, this is our goldfish fathers, the most beautiful goldfish we have. Look at the size of that goldfish. These From, aren't koi, these are goldfish. These are goldfish. A lot of people think koi are just big goldfish, but they're actually a completely different species. Yep. But these ones are so big, you can see why people would definitely confuse them. How long have you had these? How old are these? Five years. When they stop breeding, they go to a store, and those are so extremely expensive because they are really big and hard to find. Look how big and bright these are. I mean, it's hard to look at. Really strong red color. What's over here? I don't know. Looks like a cranberry farm. Hi. <laughs> this is where they keep all of their the tetras, tetras, yeah, rasboras, and American cichlids. Here you have the ones with the bubble, bubble eyes. eyes. You see, there are some that they don't have the other bubble one as bubble bigger one. as the other one. It's because it's explode, but he will regenerate it. I didn't know that. From here till there, we have ramis. Look at this. These trees in the background, it looks like we're in the Lion King. I'm expecting to see like Simba like pop up out of that edge of that mountain. What do you think, Mr. Johnny? I'm happy. <laughs> this is his happy place right now. Yeah. This is fish heaven for sure. There's snails in here too. Yeah, snails. There's a electric blue runny over here. Johnny oh, Aquascaper fish. going in. Find those fish for us. This is how you know a man loves fish when he goes hunting for them. Got them, eh? Hey, yeah. <laughs> I win. Wow, that is beautiful. They don't usually get this big. Why is that? Because breeders around the world, they usually breed uh, inside aquariums. And since we are in the tropic, we can breed them in these big tanks. They're thriving and they're getting pretty big. Wow. We have lots of things to see. There's still that much more? As okay. we say in Wisconsin, we gotta keep her moving. Wow, look at this, glowfish pond. Oh, These are all glowfish yes. pond. Guys, not my taste, but look at this. We got glowfish pond. Totally strange to see glowfish in ponds like this. Look how many. One, two, three, four, five. I personally don't like this fish, the glowfish, but they are really demanded. So this is why we have a lot of tanks of them. I mean, glowfish are great for getting people interested in the hobby. We can have here more than 5,000 goldfish in this tank. These are by far the biggest ponds at this farm. Yes, all for goldfish. Since we don't have seasons, we just have two months of rainy days, two months of sunny days, but they continually grow and grow and grow and grow. So that's good for us. Oh, it's another guard dog. You can see he's chained up, he's angry. All right, I'm not trying to steal your goldfish. Relax. <laughs> Hold on, what'd you say? Like and subscribe to who? <laughs> this whole thing is goldfish. Yep. Oh my God. Guys, all of these ponds, they're for goldfish. Goldfish! Goldfish and goldfish and goldfish and maybe like the 20% of the extents of the farm is goldfish because they are so demanded. They are the most sold fish in the world, I think. Look the at, best seller. Look at this. Jeez. Hey buddy, you call me, You had some time now to in time out. Did you, did you think about what you've done? We were just looking at those. There's more, and it looks like there's yeah, even more back there. Jeez. Angelfish, we also produce lots of angelfish here. What is this? Coconut water. Coconut water? Yes. The farm provides. <laughs> So an hour and a half, the biggest city, Medellin, you guys have an actual retail space. We have two retail stores. The one is like the biggest. There we have like the logistical center where we do the quarantine for the fish that we take from here. Here in the city of Medellin, this is their retail space. It's called Calypso Aquarium, where they offer all of their different fish to the public. Now this place has also got some pretty cool stuff. Let's check it out. There are a whole lot of fish in this aquarium. They got kind of the traditional wood, and look how far down it goes. Wow, look how many fish there are. They actually have a huge variety here. You got some mollies, you got bees. These are rasboras, goldfish. The tanks are actually really full of fish. Look how pretty some of these grammies are. 
you can see we've run into their planted aquarium section. Look how long this tank is. I think it's about seven and a half to eight feet. I love when planted tanks like this are shallow and the scape just goes almost to the top. It looks like the plants are growing out of it. Beautiful. Wow, look at these fish. Dude, that is a brilliantly beautiful fish. Now look at this epistogramma. Beautiful looking one. In Europe, I guess epistogrammas have become really, really popular. Look at this scape. Dang. Wow. This is kind of more of a old traditional style tank. We got the classic cardinal tetras. Over here, look at this tank. Whoa. This is unreal. I love these tanks, the ones that have the fog. It makes it look super magical. And look at this. Look how much gravel is in here. They really filled up <laughs> filled the up. whole gravel. And they did this on both sides to create this pocket of water that goes right through. This is what it looks like in the Amazon jungle. Fish swimming and they hide and live in the plants. You see the water kind of like tide pools up all the way up into here. This is a really beautiful aquascape. All right, so what you're about to see now is their back room where they bring a lot of the fish from their farm. This is where they quarantine a lot of fish. It's definitely a lot of extra room in tanks and they even have some secret fish no one in the front can see. Guys, they have so many fish here, maybe thousands of fish. Many of which you saw in the front store, but this is sort of like their mass stock list from the farm. Wow, look at these. Look at these. Down here, we got the baby koi. These are glowfish. These are the regular ones. These are the genetically modified glowfish version. All right, you guys are not gonna believe this. In the back here, some of the final tanks, you got the arowana, the wow. king, the dragonfish, guys. This is a beautiful white arowana. You'll see it's got curved red lines on the scales. It's got a kind of a beautiful glow to it. I can only imagine how much this fish costs. These two things on the front of his mouth that sort of look like whiskers, they actually use the sense and detect motion. It's kind of like their nose. Now a lot of arowana actually in aquariums lose those because they don't really need them anymore. But this one looks really, really nice and perfect still. He's got a little bit of drop eye. You can see this eye is in very good shape. His other eye has a little bit of drop eye. Drop eye is when the eye starts drooping down. And a lot of times, marijuana keepers, because that's a bad trait in the fish, they'll perform surgery to bring the eye back up to where it once was. If the first farm wasn't crazy enough, they actually have a second farm. These guys have so many fish that they actually expanded into a second farm. So we're going there now to show you even more fish. <laughs> also aqua richard and they are growing up tilapia guys look at this you can see them incredible system how many gallons are these vats oh they should be a hundred thousand hundred thousand gallons here are the arapaimas gigas ah so there's green. more than one arapaima huh there are even like eight here they do their quarantine here wow here. oh yes. look at the goldfish look at this wow Look at this lid. This is a true jungle tank right here. Look at the mountains. I'm surprised you guys don't get floods here. Why? Because the rain, the water comes down the... No, but we settles have... settles in your, in your pond. We have lots of rivers. Come here, we have one here. You can see the river. So the rain, the rain water is never a problem here in terms of flooding because it just goes to the river and it gets washed down. The river? Yes, it's down here and it's really beautiful. You can hear it. Yes. It's a beach. We're down by the river, which the property, the farm is located adjacent to. And you can see, this is actually where they get their water. So that's how they can keep their fish super happy, super healthy. And they can do it almost for free. Good place to build a fish farm. How many skips you got? Five. Oh, I can beat that. No get, way. Out, get out of here, Johnny. I can beat that. <laughs> I just need to find a good rock. I know John used to some crack marica. Alright. Wow. Too. Big man on campus. No, la falta práctica. Oh! oh Ay, marica. <laughs> if people are interested in finding you, by the way, how do they get in contact with you? You can find us on Facebook, Aquario Calypso. If you need fish in Colombia, this is your guy. Make sure to hit him up. Manuel, thank you so much. Hey, you're welcome. I really appreciate you taking your entire day to show us the farm. We also love the fact that you and Johnny are super into educating people on the hobby here, and you're able to provide so many different species for all the different people here is really cool. Thank you. So, that's the idea. If you made it to this part of the video,
video. It means you've completed the entire fish farm tour. Thank you for watching. Manuel, he spent his entire day showing us this place. So if you don't subscribe, he's gonna be upset. I'm gonna be upset. Cameraman Asher here is gonna be upset. Who else is gonna be upset? Johnny's gonna be upset. These dogs. Yes, these dogs are all gonna definitely be upset. Recuerda a tener los nitrados bajos. Jorge y Manuel, fuera, fuera.